Hello, my name's Steve Partner and welcome to Angling Times News. Here's this week's top stories. Desperate issues require desperate remedies and the anglers who fish at Britain's record-breaking barbel menu think they have come up with a solution to the problem of their prize stock being eaten. They're going to launch a 24-hour otter watch. The round-the-clock stakeout is being organised by bailiffs and syndicate members at Adams Mill who are keen to rescue the valuable stock of barbel from the attentions of a predatory dog otter suspected of killing at least five big fish, and that includes the record too. Members of the 50-man syndicate on the stretch of the Grey Twos near Milton Keynes feel the barbel will be especially vulnerable while they are spawning on the shallows this spring, particularly after dark when the banks are empty. And because the species is protected by European law, the fish-killing culprit cannot be trapped, moved or killed leaving concerned anglers with no choice but to start their otter watch. I'm joined in the studio by Greg Whitehead, the AT reporter who first broke the story. Now, it sounds like a potentially humorous story, this one, Greg, but uh, there are some serious implications. That, that's true, Steve. Um, these barbel, they're worth a lot of money. The ticket at Adams Mill, they're worth a lot of money. And these syndicate members, they feel at their wit's end because there's nothing they can do to protect the fish from the otter. Because the otters are, are protected by European law, you can't trap them, you can't shoot them, you can't move them. Um, the only thing they, they can think of is literally getting down on the bank and making sure they can spook predator away when the fish are on the shallows potentially spawning, which is when they're most concerned about it. Do you honestly think that it'll work? I think that um, it's got to be better than doing nothing. If, if they do nothing, then the the predator's free to, to take fish as it as it feels it, it, it likes. That's when they found most of the carcasses after the cold spells, when people weren't fishing on the river because the water temperature was too cold to catch barbels. So that's the concern. If they're there, they can maybe spook it off. Thanks, Greg. It might only be early April, and the weather might have only just started to warm up, but this ship proved the sport can still be prolific, and he took one of the best bags of the year so far by weighing in a colossal 307 pound and 14 ounces. The Bristol based matchman took the huge hit on the final day of the Van der Nijn Festival at the famous Whiteacres complex in Cornwall. Grappling with 18 and a half metres of pole, he presented hair rigged meat to take between 60 and 70 carp to 10 pound, and he reckoned he might even have topped 400 pound if it hadn't have been for the strong winds. The catch, which is a new venue record, helped Des to overall second place in the five day festival. Love them or loathe them, you just can't ignore them. And this week, the great bait boat debate hit the headlines once again. Semex Angling, the country's biggest fishery owner, has decided any angler wanting to use one will need to pay a £25 yearly permit to do so. The move, which follows on from other waters, like Richworth Linear and Midkent Fisheries, who already banned bait boats, has been done as a way of monitoring use. However, Phil Fry, who is the owner of Boat Manufacture Angling Techniques, believes it's just another way of raising revenue and is adamant they help you catch more fish. Recent calls for a lifting of the closed season have been slammed this week by a man who spends 12 hours a day studying river ecosystems. Last month the National Federation of Anglers claimed the current three month layoff is out of date, but keen angler and conservationist Brian Morland believe those words are stupid and selfish. He has spent the last seven years working on behalf of the Environment Agency and English nature, studying river venues in Yorkshire. And he claims the evidence he has compiled provides the proof that the current closed season must stay in place. And finally, it was supposed to be a way of relaxing during his lunch hour, but it ended in a battle that resulted in Adam Martin banking a giant 46 pound four ounce mirror carp on a lure. The Southampton based angler took the specimen after heading down to a still water in the Avon Valley during his midday break. Armed with just a seven foot spinning rod and Rapala shad wrap lure, he intended to target Pike, but he got the shock of his life when the monster mirror grabbed his plug. It's thought to be the biggest carp ever caught on a lure. That's it from AT News this week, but be sure to join us next week for a rundown on all the big stories.